I just, I'm just curious. I'd, I'd like maybe a show of hands. How many people here have driven more than two hours to get here? Wow. That's thank you. Okay. How about anyone who's driven more than four hours to get here? Okay, you get a drink on me at the poster session. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, so that just goes to, to exemplify how the Vermont Monitoring Cooperative is not just about Vermont anymore in spite of the name. Um, we really are working on thinking more broadly. Right? We know that forest health issues and the forest ecosystem doesn't stop at the boundaries of the Vermont border. And so because we do have so many new faces here, I just wanted to reiterate what the mission of the Vermont Monitoring Co-op is, why we're even here today, why did you drive four plus hours to get here. And really it's all about the fact that there are so many of us doing good work around forested ecosystems, not just the trees, but also the water and the air and the wildlife. And thinking about these ecosystems as an integrated whole, but we're often working in parallel, even within our own organizations or our own agencies. I will admit that I often don't know what my colleagues who are right down the hall are working on. So this is really an opportunity for us all to come together and to share our work. And I actually encourage you maybe to step outside of your silo, your comfort zone. If you are a bug person, I encourage you to go to a remote sensing talk. No bias there because I have a couple of those. Um, if you are a wildlife person, check out some of the water talks. Right? We're all thinking more of these ecosystems as, as a true system. So that's really what the Vermont Monitoring Co-op is about. And, and really, um, this is exemplified in our long-term monitoring report. We try to have this annual report out each year before the conference. As you can imagine, it's been a busy couple of weeks trying to wrap this up. But this is not just the VMC staff. This is basically data looking at a range of data sets, again, covering all different components of the forested ecosystem, looking at long-term trends and patterns. Right? It's not just about what, what uh, acute event happened this year. It's about these long-term changes changes that we see in forested ecosystems. And it really is the collaborators who've made this possible. They're the ones who have collected the data, done the work, run the analyses, and then helped us pull it together in a nice, succinct format. So um, these are something that we work on each year, and we're continually trying to add new data sets to that, new long-term data sets. This year we have trout. My husband, who is a fly fisherman, was particularly happy about that, especially since, contrary to his fishing record, apparently all trout are not dying. I don't know if it says about his fishing. Um, but this is also really all possible because of this unique partnership between the U.S. Forest Service, um, the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, and the University of Vermont. This would not even be happening. This type of an organization existing to bring together people, to find efficiencies, to build collaborations, to maintain long-term monitoring, none of this would happen if it weren't for funding from the U.S. Forest Service. Um, the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, particularly Forest Parks and Recreation, has been instrumental instrumental in guiding what the organization looks like. They have been instrumental in serving on the steering committees and on um, the advisory committees. They really are what make it tick, and it's just really their in-kind contribution that make it work. Um, and then also the University of Vermont. I mean, if you think about the fact we're in this beautiful building, but we're only paying $20 for a registration, this is all the kind of thing that the University of Vermont makes possible. Also the fact that we have this beautiful web server and we can archive these databases. Um, it really is a partnership between these organizations. But it's not just about um, those organizations. VNC is also uh, committed to try to maintain long-term monitoring, something that is absolutely not easy in this funding climate, as I'm sure all of you are aware. Um, it's much easier, still not easy, to get maybe funding for short-term projects. But to keep a data set going over 20 or 30 years is really um, an amazing feat. And it's, again, thanks to our partners working to find additional funding to keep a lot of this going. So um, we owe particular thanks uh, to the Lake Champlain Basin Program, uh, Colorado State, USGS, the White Mountain National Forest, and the list goes on in, in terms of just piecing together this program. Um, but then recently we also were able to get um, a grant from the MacArthur Foundation, which has helped us really bring the VNC database 
into the, I would say the 22nd century. How about that? On par with what NSF is, is using to make sure that their data stores are safe and accessible, um, really making it easier for the PIs. And so hopefully if you are interested in that, you can attend our workshop this afternoon to show you a little bit of how you might be able to bring your data um, into an archive that is easily searchable, shareable, um, and so that even when you retire or go away, the file cabinet isn't stuck in a corner. That's really the main goal. Um, we also have to give a big thanks to the people who are directly involved in the DMC. The DMC staff is really small. There's only a couple of us. It really is this broader collaborative that makes all of this work. So I want to give a big shout out to our steering committee members and our advisory committee members um, for making this work, and particularly over the past year, because as you're going to hear um, from our director, Jim Duncan, in a moment, uh, the structure is changing a little bit. We are uh, adjusting and adapting to, to new needs, and so this committee, these committees have been really instrumental um, in making that happen. And, and so that's what we wanted to sort of take a, a pause and before we launch into the panel, because there are some major changes coming down the pipe, maybe uh, take a moment just to tell you what this means and, and how um, this may be the last Vermont Monitoring Cooperative meeting, but the beginning of a new era. So I um, invite Jim Duncan, our uh, director, to come up and tell you about that. So thank you, Jen. Thank you all for being here, for making this long trek. And I do want to say thank you to our great staff, Judy Rosowski, Mim Pendleton, John Chung, and Mike Finnegan, and our interns, Diana and Kirsty, who are here to help us today. We really couldn't do it without you. And as Jen said, this could be the last Vermont Modern Cooperative meeting, but only because we get to move to an exciting new stage where we get to announce the Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative. And this is uh, the result of uh, about a year of work to try and transition to a more regional model. And the reason being that we need regional approaches. Uh, there's plenty of people working in parallel on the same issues within your organizations. Coordinating among those groups is hard, and that's something we've been able to do in Vermont pretty well. And we also know that ecosystems don't really respect political boundaries. Um, the Connecticut River separates Vermont and New Hampshire, but it doesn't separate the forest ecosystems that uh, border it. And we also know that we've got a lot of data, and doing things with that data is hard um, by yourself, let alone to try and understand connections across ecosystem conditions. And that's where synthesis and aggregation that the DMC has been doing can be expanded and brought out to a, gro a broader regional group. So since the meeting last year, We've been trying to seed a number of initiatives to build a more regional model for the DMC. And that includes some work with our state partners in New York, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire on uh, looking at aerial detection survey data integration, trying to rescue historical data that may be stuck in someone's paper box underneath their desk, and getting it into a form that you can actually start to work with it. We've been looking at research data sets for New Hampshire and Massachusetts that will complement those aerial detection monitoring. So how do we take that research data and turn it into monitoring? We've been lucky to partner with a group in the Upper Hudson Valley called the Environmental Monitoring and Management Alliance. And they are doing some really great work with land managers around the region uh, in New York to bring data together for management purposes and designing an ecological dendrochronology database, working with the Northeastern States Research Cooperative to archive and serve out their data to make it more understandable and put it in context. All of these individual seeds have led us to uh, make this official change. So the steering committee approved a transition to calling ourselves the Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative. So this is the first time you get to see the name in big letters, and it won't be the last. So our next meeting will be the Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative. <laughs> And this is an opportunity, it really is, to expand this integrative approach to other states to try and work more with other partners. And that's great because it means we get to talk to that many more people, we get to work with that much more data, and we get to try and um, surface the issues from that many more people. We've had really great success here in Vermont, but I think we can really do this at a wider scale and really strengthen this approach at a more regional level. And it also gives us this new frame and structure for the DMC. Now, who loves organizational charts? Yeah, because that's what's coming. I apologize, but this new structure also brings new opportunities to engage. So we will have a steering committee like we do. It will be expanded, and it still has the final say over strategic direction at a regional scale and a budget. The most exciting thing is the state partnership committees. So this is, these are groups at the state level that set priorities for budgets and for activities for the DMC that service those regional goals. 
and this is where we're going to need some help. And we'll have an advisory resource group that's a cross-cutting um, state agnostic group that can support on specific issues. So we'll take over the role of our advisory committee and supporting the state partnership committees and the steering committee. And so this new area is where we're going to need a lot of help. It's not just about going to another committee meeting. It's also about saying what we should do with our budget and what our regional priorities should be. So if you're interested in getting involved, we'd love to hear from you. This also gets us to the new capacities we're bringing to the Vermont Monitor, sorry, the Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative. Um, <laughs> see how many times it slip up on that. Uh, the management portal, as Jen mentioned, is open. So we are now ready to throw the doors open, give you accounts. If you want to manage your data through the system, make it discoverable, put it alongside other ecosystem data for the region, we have a system to do that, and it works really well. And I'm really thankful for Mike Finnegan for all of his work on getting to us to this state. And we also now have fee-for-service capacity, a streamlined way to, provide, to put monitoring field crews on the ground to do basic data analysis or complex database development data analytics. This is a new model where we can take in money a little bit easier than doing a formal grant, going through the VM. No one loves it. So we can now contract basically for these services, and this is a way that we can also expand our regional capacity quickly. So if you have work that needs to do, we can do it. Um, and an example of how we're trying to go regional is we've actually invited this great panel here from around the region to talk about what's clearly a regional issue of importance, how we manage forests and how those connect to watershed conditions. 